So all coronary veins drain into the coronary sinus. So you can see it depicted here, running along the, and this is very high yield, the left posterior atrioventricular groove between the left atrium and the left ventricle. It runs right down the middle of these two vessels, something that, you know, this particular phrase or I guess uh, this term left posterior atrioventricular groove comes up, you know, relatively frequently. Now this is going to drain, this coronary sinus is going to drain into the right atrium. And I already told you where in the right atrium. I told you that it drains between the inferior vena cava and the tricuspid valve. That's the classic area that we'll see this drain into, which is also the location of ablations of atrial flutter, kind of right in that uh, vicinity. The embryologic derivative is the sinus venosus, right? We talked about this in the embryology video. This is also high yield. The clinical correlation here, this is where things get tricky, especially for someone who's just studying for step one. Biventricular pacemakers is a pretty advanced concept, and you don't have to know a ton about them, but let me just explain it to you. I'm going to give you the, the Spark Notes version of this. So basically, you know, pacemakers, we would put in a patient to kind of organize when contractions are happening. Now, a biventricular pacemaker is like it says, putting a lead in each ventricle so that the ventricles can coordinate and contract at the right time, at the same time. And patients that have heart failure, there's usually a dyssynchrony that's happening with this. So in these patients, sometimes we'll put in these biventricular pacemakers. So the key that you want to know, though, when it comes down to the anatomy, they'll ask you about the anatomy of these biventricular pacemakers. So in reality, these pacemakers, even though it says bi, they actually usually have three leads. Okay, so one of the leads actually goes into the right atrium. Okay, so the first lead usually goes to the right atrium, and then you have your two ventricular leads. So we have one lead that goes to the right ventricle, okay? And the way that this works is you just take this device here, this is the generator. So you take the generator, right, and you run a venous line in through usually, you know, one of the veins, and then you can eventually get it inside. This is the subclavian vein here. You get it inside to the subclavian vein, you go down the superior vena cava, and you're in the right atrium. So that's where you drop off the first lead. Then you go into the right ventricle, you drop off the second lead. And then the question is, how do you get that third lead into the other ventricle? How do you get it into the left ventricle? Well, you can go through the coronary sinus located in the right atrium, and then you can run it through the left ventricular uh, venous tributaries to eventually get it to the left ventricle. Now you might be saying, well, what about, can I just run that from the right ventricle up through the pulmonary artery? And for these pacemakers, that's classically not how it's done. When you're talking about running a line or a catheter from the right ventricle up to the pulmonary artery, you're talking about the Swan-Gans catheter, classically, and I'll talk about that in a minute. But when we're talking about biventricular pacemakers, this is what I want you to know. You run the third lead through the coronary sinus, okay, and we already know that location. It's by the inferior vena cava and the tricuspid valve, right atrium. We run it through there, and then we can get it to the left ventricle through those venous tributaries. Let's just look at this on imaging really quickly. So we can see here, this is the generator that we just talked about. That's this guy. Okay, so this is going to be usually just underneath the skin. And so we can see the three leads. So here, this one's going to be in the right atrium. We can see, and that makes sense, right? Here's the right heart border. So this would be right atrium, like we talked about. Right ventricle is going to be most anteriorly. It's kind of hard to see in the PA view, but you can see this lead. And you can see these, it's really dark. What's this? Real, why is this lead so much darker than this one? Well, this one has conduction coils on it. This pacemaker is built in with an ICD, an implantable cardio verter defibrillator. So basically, if this patient goes into ventricular arrhythmias, we can shock them with the ICD, and the ICD will try to restore sinus rhythm in the patient. So that's what, that's what these coils are for shocking the patient if needed. And then you can see the final lead is right over here, all the way on the side of the left ventricle. Okay, so that's your biventricular pacemaker.